we should be clear about differentiation of categories of benign jaundice because <clears throat> most of the babies with prolonged jaundice have this benign jaundice. So we have physiologic jaundice, which we are clear that it starts by 24 to 36 hours. It peaks by three to four days and the peak is around five to 12 milligrams. And by, uh, it, by one to two weeks, most of them go below three milligrams per cent unless there is breastfeeding jaundice. So physiologic jaundice can progress to either of these two. So breastfeeding jaundice is aggravated physiologic jaundice in breastfeeding babies, usually due to reduced milk output, uh, the time it takes for the lactogenesis. The peaks uh, by two to four days and the peak bilirubin uh, that onset is two to four days, similar to physiologic jaundice, peak by three to six days. The peak is a little higher. It can be exaggerated and some of these babies may need treatment. Of course, you need to attend to the feeding sufficiency as well. And uh, these babies usually have a component of uh, breast milk jaundice in some of them because these are mainly breastfed babies and the jaundice may persist uh, more than three weeks. In uh, incidence is 12 to 13 percent. Of course, uh, breast milk jaundice is due to the beta glucuronidase, which is secreted in the milk of some of the mothers. So it's fairly not very common, but not uncommon as well. So two to four percent of the babies will have breast milk jaundice. And here, actually, you have a level more than 10 milligrams persisting for a few weeks. So I've seen babies where the bilirubin is like 12, 13 milligram, even at two to three months of age. And all that we do is monitor the bilirubin on a regular basis. There is no indication in any of these conditions to supplement with formula or to disrupt breastfeeding unless you are needing, uh, you are approaching a level close to exchange transfusion. Of course, you can treat with phototherapy if it crosses the phototherapy range for that age of the baby, but you don't need to disrupt breastfeeding. And if you do have to pause breastfeeding for a couple of days, if they are approaching exchange, you can uh, reassure the mother and encourage her to express the milk. This is what we discussed. So breastfeeding jaundice is due to the uh, delayed letdown and reduced calorie intake and relative dehydration. There may be decreased fluid intake and delayed passage of meconium associated. And this is the so showing the area where the beta glucuronidase acts. If the beta glucuronidase comes in from the milk, it releases the bilirubin from the conjugated bilirubin in the gut and it can enter the enterohepatic circulation and keeps persisting. It doesn't come out as much in the stool. So here, the only thing we need to do is optimal breastfeeding support from antenatal and immediate postnatal period. And we need to monitor closely for the breast milk jaundice, but don't stop breastfeeding. And of course, if they fill the criteria, fulfill the criteria, 